What's going on, everybody? I want to welcome you into another episode of the Freedom Stories podcast. I'm your host, Pastor Fury, and this is the podcast where we spend some time diving into the stories of different people who are trying to walk with the Lord, recognizing that he is the bringer of freedom right? And so we get into their freedom story. And I'm so excited to introduce you guys today to one of the people who is dearest to my heart, who uh, every time I just talk to her, I just feel the presence of God. And you guys, I think you will too as well. So let me go ahead and invite on in here, none other than Carmen Powers. Um, <laughs> Carmen, y'all don't, y'all, if don't, if you don't know Carmen, um, she is a, a a woman of small stature, but big faith. Uh, there's a, there's a spiritual presence that just goes with her, and um, um, I hope that uh, you guys will get to experience uh, just that as as we have our conversation here today. Um, so, Carmen, uh, welcome to the podcast. Oh, Arman, I am so in awe and so excited and so honored, honored. Honor. By this, just you asking me to do this because that's something that is in the heart of God. Mm. I am so excited because God has just make it possible these, and He will. Oh, uh, He wants to do something. I know yeah. that He calls us and He calls us to be in a place. He leads us. So I believe that this interview is because He wanted, and He has everything set up. Or what's going on. Amen. Amen. And and you guys, we had a bit of a conversation before we started this this recording, and we were just even reflecting on um just so many of the different ways that the Lord has things planned for us. And mm -hmm. and even though we might be going through different trials, like he's made a way. I wonder if we can now take it back to uh all the way back in into your journey, Carmen. Um Tell, tell us a little bit about uh, what life was like for you growing up, maybe a little bit of your family, you know, makeup and where, yes. where you guys were living and, and what did faith look like at that time? Yes. Um, I, yeah, I was born in Lima, Peru. Uh, we used to go, when I was younger, very little, uh, to a Catholic church. But that was probably since when I was, was maybe seven years old. From there, we grew up, we never went back. And later on, when I came to the United States, and thank God, and I how old were just, you when you uh, came to the United States? I was 27. Okay. Was so 20. for the first 27 years, there was very little faith. Very, very, okay. like maybe six year old when I went to the Catholic Church. Then, so when I came here, um, I start working and I I got married and um, and just my life was coming from a broken family, very mm. broken, with um, a lot of a lot of sin, really hard places in the mm. life of my family, very very hard um, divorces. Uh, jail, mm. uh, you name it. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that background, you just have memories, right? Mm. And you just want to forget it. Really, that's right. the reality. But we have a God that, that redeems everything. Yeah. When I encountered the Lord, I was uh, 40, almost 50. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, almost 50. And um, uh, the Lord make it make it just to work in ways that um, He prepares everything. My mother encountered the Lord first with my sister. They went to um, a service because they were trying to make a solution for a family uh, for uh, my niece that was trying to get a divorce, uh, and she, they were twenty one years old. And the mother of the young man tells my mother and my sister, go to this service. No, go to this place. She didn't say service. Maybe they didn't go. <laughs> they well, they, wouldn't, they didn't know that they it was a church service. They were going to say, okay, we'll go. So that day, 
they heard the gospel. Mm. That day, my mother never anymore took a trip mm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow, wow. That day, both of them, they grieve and mourn and lament for a month. I thought they were going crazy. I thought they were, they, I need, I, they needed psychology. So what? I call my brother-in-law and they say, mm, your sister is the same. Mm. What happened is the Lord, the Holy Spirit was working in their hearts mm -hmm. of repentance. The gospel is a gospel of repentance. There's no other way around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my mother and my my sister pleading, praying. All of a sudden, my mother said, my mother was very bold, is very bold. And she said, you know, you're going to help if you don't receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And you just better mm -hmm. change churches. Because at that time, I was, was trying to look good and going to the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. uh, and not against the Catholic Church. Yeah. I love the Catholic Church because there is something... They tried to do something. Yeah. I get I get my my first knowing about God, but I saw Jesus was dead. So at so, this time, just so I'm clear, at this time, you are going to the Catholic Church, but kind of just to look good type of thing. And then yes. they went to another service and they encountered God. Encounter God. Okay. Then all of a sudden, everything is start coming down. At work, I would people with Bibles. People talking to me, I would. My mother and I, we were like kind of fighting. Not all, all the churches are the same. And I mm. approach a couple. I said, "These people go to church," and I tell them, "You know, is that true that God is in all the churches?" And they look at me and they say, "No, but we can talk about it." And uh, I get a meet uh, with them for coffee. And what they wear were moody. They work a moody. I didn't know. Nice. I went right to them. Wait, where did you meet them? At the restaurant. No, I mean, like, where how did you? How did you in like find them? The Lord just put it in my mind that they were the people that I needed to us. I don't. Oh know. wow! Like just random people. Yes. That's beautiful. Wow, that is beautiful. All right, so continue. then. I start going. They, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ. My husband start also going. At the mm. same time, at the same time, my husband got the news that he had cancer. Oh, wow. Wow. So the Lord was preparing us. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. He lived three years with cancer, between heart attacks, um, always in the hospital. My daughters were like six, eight, nine. Uh, it mm -hmm. was very hard for them to see their father just going to those places. Yeah. And at, at the my I prayed this. Yeah, I didn't know that I was praying. I remember going to the window and I say, Lord, I want my husband to be the leaders that I see at this church leading but mm. i didn't see not no effort from my husband mm. a few months later i can see my husband reading his bible going to choir singing i see my husband the a youth leader of mm. the teenagers mm -hmm. so that was one answer to pray Wow. And that was all during that three year period where he was struggling with cancer and with cancer. Wow. We went wow. to a mission trip. We went to uh, Dominican Republic after the surgery. We went there. We he gave his testimony in jail in the jail. The jail it was just uh, an incredible place, but nobody can enter, but they enter just unprotected in front of all the people and my husband give his testimony. And, wow. and I just, it was just amazing. It was the end of his last year. It was amazing. 
It's just mm. how the Lord took him to a place and he was just praising God and just knowing that the Lord was working. Um, mm. How was that? I, I, let me interrupt real quick. So how was that? I know you said it was it was it was hard for your daughters, and I can't imagine being a, a young a young lady uh, going through that, seeing their father like that. Um, and I'll and I'll get to even some questions about at that time because I would like to sit on this period yes. for a little bit and find out a bit more. How was that for you, um, newer in your faith as well, and and processing him going through cancer? Was this was this something for you that while he was going through it, that was was strengthening your faith and you were like, God's going to heal him? Or was it like where you were wavering and, and worrying or or like what practically speaking, how was that? How was processing that season for you? At that time, I am um, at the church that I, I was going, I was going I would say Sunday to Sunday, I didn't have time to read the word. Well, I didn't make time to read the word. Right, but right. The pressure of the pain, you you have something in your heart that is just, Lord, why? What mm. are you doing? It's, it's the desperation of your soul. Mm-hmm. I remember going to a Bible study that it was verse by verse, and the Holy Spirit started talking to me. And I start praying without even knowing day and night, night and day. Mm-hmm. I uh, I wanted to die because mm-hmm. I said, you know what? My husband is the one who has uh, the major income, right? The major right. income that they can sustain everything. And I said, Lord, it would be easier for me. Mm-hmm. I remember that day I was driving. But I'd say I wanted to die. Mm. And I felt, I felt a hug from the Lord. I mean, tangible. Mm. Wow. Tangible. And the sun was shining. I said, it has to be you. And I just, that is strengthened me. You see, there's people right now that are listening that they don't think that God is real. That is mm-hmm. not right. That's not right. That's not. The Lord is going to speak to you in different ways. Right. The Lord speaks through his word. It speaks through visions. It speaks through dreams. It speaks through, through so many places. And, and, and you know what? He's so real that right now is here. His presence mm-hmm. is, isn't it? Because we're talking about him. His presence is here. Amen. And God, I ask you, remind me all the things that you want me to say right now. Mm-hmm. One thing is, the Lord sometimes uses trials yeah. in order for us to go to Him. And it's, it's, it's the desperation of my dilemma, my trial, that He wants to bring comfort. He wants to bring assurance. Even yeah. Even if the person that my husband was terminal. The person that your husband was what? Was terminal, a cancer that he was terminal. Like, oh, right, right. I believe in healing. Right now, I believe that the Lord heals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I totally believe that the Lord heals. At that time, my, my, um, my understanding of healing and those things, wonder signs, it wasn't really clear. All I mm-hmm. knew it was like God it was real. Right, right. We went to prayer meetings with my husband. We went to places to uh healing that they can pray. And he went and it was fantastic the way they pray. But at the same time I believe that every time I pray for my husband, mm-hmm. they were praying also for us, for me and my daughters and my family. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Prayer is something that we we don't have really a grasp. The significance yeah. of the Holy Spirit can do to prayer. We, we we are grasping right now as 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 things are going on. I see that the the church and the body of Christ is praying right now more. You see, mm-hmm. the, the the Lord says in His Word, "My house." 
is a house of prayer, will be a house of prayer. When he said that, he said it for a reason. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't have that relationship with him, nothing is going to, okay, his blessings yeah. are coming for the right and just, okay. But the will of the Lord comes, not for my doing, for what he already has established in his will. And mm -hmm. we, we are going to pull down what he has already for us to be done here. Mm -hmm. Because the, head, the kingdom of heaven, we take it by force. And Come one on. of the Come things on. that we take it by force is you pray it. And yeah. sometimes, sometimes you know, oh, this is not happening. This is not happens the lord wants his goodness to be released in our lives i have walked with my life in the life of my family with so much sadness so much brokenness i was a fearful person i couldn't even speak look at your eyes i couldn't even i was so shy fear of everything mm. so fearful the lord as the more I pray, the more I read his word. Because mm -hmm. those go together. The more I see his word, what happened? I love him. Yeah. Yeah. Prayer is an act of love. Mm. It's a love relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You married your wife, you married your your husband because you know him when you get to know him. If we don't know the Lord, how we're going to approach Him? Just yeah. for my needs, right, um, right. But the intimacy, like for the for the sake of growing in deeper knowledge of Him and relationship. I wonder, as you were going through that that tough season with the the three three girls you're trying to raise and. Looking at them and and uh, their journeys, I knowing them now, I I see the legacy of faith, you know, being born in them and and bearing fruit. What was it like back then for them? Like, um, was where 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 were they? And without maybe going into like their each individual by name stories, but like where were they with their faith journeys? Did they grab a hold of it around the same time that you did? in the midst of the challenge with their father, you know, going through the terminal illness, or was that something that, you know, they, they had their own difficulties uh, of sorts with? Um, I believe that it's a mix of it. I believe mm -hmm. that they, they have received the seeds, mm -hmm. the seeds of the word of God, the seeds of the faith of, of their father, the seeds of my mother praying constantly mm -hmm. in the house, the seeds of knowing that God despise what happened to my husband, he's good. He mm -hmm. is good. And I have seen, I have seen situations in the lives of my daughters that they couldn't end up in very hard places. Mm -hmm. Because raising three teenagers, 14, 13, and 10, is not easy for a woman. Right, right. And, and at, at the same time, I um, I lost a lot of money. Mm. I was desperate. Mm. I didn't have. I lost a huge amount of money right after my husband passed away, and I I was totally desperate. I didn't know what to do. Just pray. I asked everybody to pray. I was. I went to a prayer meeting to a service. I prayer. My daughters saw me. I even. Um, can remember taking them all the time to different conferences, to different um, services. And I believe that the Lord has done there a lot of prayer. Mm -hmm. People have prayed for them. And I have seen that the Lord has proven to them who He is. Yeah. Has proven because, you know, I cannot work in the faith of, of, of them. The, yeah. They, they can't. They can't. They can't children. ride off of the faith of their mother, right? No. Yeah. They. They yeah. probably. We just pray. 
I just pray, I say, deliver them from evil. And yeah. may you be the one who leads their life. May you encounter them. Because mm -hmm. the God is a God of encounter. Look at what he did with Moses. Mm -hmm. God wants to encounter each one of us. Mm -hmm. God wants to use details, things in our lives to just take us to the place. Because he has a plan for you, for me, for, for our kids. He has divine, he has thoughts. He's in Psalm 139, he says, he says thoughts as sun in the ocean, uh, on the seashore. What does it mean? Oh my goodness, I, I, I wish I have just one thought for my daughter, but my grand Abba has thousands of thoughts for my kids, my, my right. girls. So based on that, based on know that the plans of the Lord are good, Mm -hmm. I believe, I keep praying, and I believe in, believing, though the, the journey hasn't been easy because they have their struggles. But in mm -hmm. every struggle, God is present. Yeah. God is yeah. present. And, and sometimes, you know, I try to control that. The Lord has shown me a lot that I try to control those things you know, to get out of the way. I am not learning. I am learning. We are in process of learning. Yeah. yeah. With God. And that's, I think that's, that's gotta be a thing that's so hard. Um, I shouldn't say gotta be, I know it is because I have kids as well. Uh, <laughs> of like where, where you've, you've got, you know, your own set of experiences and wisdom that the Lord has taught you through your journey. And now you're looking at them where they're at and, and, and you're like, Oh, but I, if I, I, I just wish that you would choose this, you know, like, and, and, and you, you, you have this temptation to try and, you know, manipulate things to move them into that position. I know I went through that for, for years um, with my wife and, and her spiritual journey. And I would, I would find myself, you know, opening up the Bible to certain pages, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, but she would just stumble into that and read and, you know, all, all sorts of things. And, I actually just uh, yesterday saw um, like a little silly video clip that had me laughing and it was kind of like a meme thing where they, they, they'll they say like a phrase or whatever. But OK, it was this little picture of this guy. It was like a five second clip and he's out at the beach, you know, yeah. with the waves coming in off the ocean and he's got a mop. <laughs> and he's out there trying to mop up the ocean and then the thing it says above there is like me trying to act like i can control things you yeah. know like, <laughs> it's like it's not it's not in your control it's, it's the lord it's not and he because, just continues to prove to us right. that he's um worthy of us trusting him with that control because yeah. i know one and the, the, one, here's one of the reasons why i can i can um more easily trust the Lord with the journey that he's got with my wife. And I'm going to just give this real quick testimony. I remember early on in our, you know, so we were connected at torch, right. At, when yeah. we were at the, uh, the movie theater, that's where I first met you. At least I believe it was the movie theater. Yes. Yeah. I um, and I remember during that season, uh, I was like desperately trying to uh, get my wife saved. I'm like, are you going to come to know the Lord? And, Da, da, da. And I was going about it the wrong way for a while. And then eventually um, I, I was realizing, wait a minute, it's not even like fully my wife's control. Like this is the Lord's work. Yes. Like he's the Lord of salvation. And so I need to direct my energy towards him and less mm -hmm. about trying to manipulate her into making yes. this decision. And the first thing that happened though, was actually, I got angry at the Lord because I was like, well, wait a minute. Like, I've been going hard for you for like, why, why is it that you're not doing this for me? And you know how difficult life is and yada, yada, yada. So I was getting, getting all my feelings for a little bit until um, I felt like the Lord um, began to soften my heart to where at least while I wasn't like fully trusting yet, I was submitting that, okay, you know what? Fine. I'm just gonna, I'm going to at least be in conversation with you about it. And like, it was, a, it was a more loving relationship again versus me being angry at him. And then I remember after one Sunday, 
there was a friend of mine who uh, knew me from my life before the Lord, who had been trying to invite to church over and over again. I invited him again and he finally came. And then we're sitting at the McDonald's that was right outside of the movie theater, basically. And um, I remember he and his wife and me and Larissa were sitting there and he goes, you know what, Armand, okay, what, what is, what is the big deal about church and this church? And why do you go to this church? Why? Cause I was always talking about towards this, towards that. You gotta go. It's like, what's the big deal? Why does it matter? And I got ready to, cause I was ready. I was like, all right, here we go. This is my, my big opportunity. And before I could say anything, Larissa spoke up. And she said, you know what? I'm not going to say his name. She goes, you know what? Um, I don't believe like they believe. They And most of the people there know that. But they love me. They treat me well. And you know what? I'm not a church girl. But if I'm going to go to a church, I'm going to go to that one. And like my mouth just hit the floor. And <laughs> I was like, ah. That was a that was a better response than I could give in that moment, you know, because she was in that moment not a Christian trying to win him to her side, which I would have been, but she yes. was somebody who's like, I'm where you're at, you know what I mean? And like, this is a safe place to explore where I'm at. And since then, both of them ended up getting saved. I ended up getting to baptize both of them. And like, if I had my way, if I was God, she would already have been a Christian on the same side as me and not able to speak in the same way that she exactly. was able to in that moment. And so I keep repeating that to myself simply because I need to remember that God is God. And he's, he's earned the right. And he demonstrates over and over again that he is sovereign and knows the best things. And my ways are not his ways. Thank God. Literally, thank God. Because my ways would cause all sorts of destruction unknowingly. And that's what happened in my life for the first 30 years. I thought I was brilliant. I grew up in the church. But my ways ended me up in my garage thinking about suicide, trying to get my life back together from all of my sins. And anyways... I didn't mean to take over the interview, but I just had to no, step no, in and, and just remind folks that are listening that that God is God for a reason. He has the yes. the knowledge that surpasses all knowledge. He's all knowing. Yeah. He yes. there's nothing that catches him by surprise. There's there's nothing, he's got nothing. ways beyond ways beyond ways, and and um he's he's good and loving. Like I'm grateful Amen. that he's not just powerful, but that he loves us so much. Whew. Hey, you guys, Cleo and I just wanted to interrupt this episode for a brief moment to let you know a little bit about the sponsor of the episode. That's right. It is Freedom Story Media. Freedom Story Media is all about telling your story. We know that it matters and we want to help you tell it and achieve your goals. Freedom Story Media creates compelling videos, websites, and graphics so that you can experience freedom in life and in business. So why don't you go ahead and check it out. We can do uh, videos for your website, for your company. We can build a website for your company. If you need a new logo or graphics, maybe it's even something small, like a, a slideshow presentation for uh, a wedding that that you know uh, maybe you're helping put together. If you got a media project, whether big or small, we'd love to help you out. Go to freedomstorymedia.com and find out more. Now, let's get you back to today's episode. Say bye, Cleo. You you have said something already twice about love, and I think that's what the Lord wants to emphasize mm. right now. Yeah. You see, God so loved the world mm. that he sent his son. Yeah. Everything is about love. Yep. He want, he wants to captivate our hearts with his love. He wants us to go to his word of God because every page speaks about love. Mm. I was I was really fall, fall in love with with Jesus when I read the Old Testament mm. because I couldn't imagine. How can it go? Uh, what, how can it people who just continuously go back to idols to idols? To, how can how can a God that is so yeah. amazing always responding, always 
always caring, always returning blessings, always, always. You know, and, and sometimes people don't want to read the Old Testament because mm -hmm. they say, no, it's too, too bad. That's a lie from the enemy. Right. The Old Testament is the foundation of the New Testament. Yeah. The yeah. Old Testament set up the foundations of what you're going to read. Um, yeah. These three, four years that are going to uh, the Messianic Church, I am reading every year Torah mm -hmm. has radically changed my life mm. more. You know why? Because they take you from, for to say, from Genesis to the New Testament. To, to Second Samuel, to from Leviticus. Leviticus is a book of oh, amazing law, mm. numbers. All, all those prophets, they just make you love and find love in Jesus. In the Word of God, we have the Word of God to show the love of Christ for us. And mm. if when we get the love of God, we can love other people. Amen. How can I'm going Amen. to show love to people if I don't, if love has to encounter me with his love in order mm. to love others, to love myself, to love yeah. myself. If I don't love myself, how can I love other person? Yeah, yeah. I have to love myself. And therefore, when you find something in this book, that is highlighted a word it means he's speaking and you mm. know what i do i just pray it i grab a verse i didn't know how to pray i don't know how to pray the holy spirit is the spirit of prayer and mm. he's the one who lead us carmen these verses is speaking loud to you go ahead call it declare it mm. And that's what I'm doing. That's what God wants. Because this is a prophetic word. Mm -hmm. This is a prophetic word. What is going to happen in the end times? Here we have it. And it's the, yeah. it's the word of hope. Mm -hmm. It's not a word of fear. It's the mm -hmm. word of hope. And right now the Lord is speaking, come to me. Return to me. Know with the peace of your heart. Wholehearted. Mm -hmm. Wholehearted through mm. reading and interceding to, to find the depths of your heart. What is in your heart? What is in my heart? And looking to be famous or looking to make him famous and mm -hmm. looking to hear his word, to his, his voice in order to go and pray and to go and do what he's asking me to do. Because you know what? When you pray, you can, you can also evangelize. When you pray, you can also prophesy. When mm -hmm. you pray, you can preach. When mm -hmm. you pray, you can do a lot of things. Prayers of foundation. Prayers of I, I have a sign. I have a sign on my wall as a reminder because so I, I have this constant um conflict where mm -hmm. I know I know how important prayer is, and yet I get so busy doing. That I don't, I don't respect prayer to the level that I need to, and so I have a sign that says, "Pray like it's the only way." Yes, because I know by default I'm going to do. Like I don't have an issue with like laziness, where I'm not, I'm going to sit around and not do anything. Like I know I'm going to do things, but I don't always know that I'm going to pray like God calls me to pray. You know what I mean? So I, I have to be reminded that if I'm not praying, the things that I'm doing won't bear the fruit that I want them to, because I'll end up doing so many things that he would actually be trying to lead me out of. I'll be, end up doing so many things out of my own strength and not his own, you know, not his strength, you know, and, and oftentimes like he, he would, he would be empowering me to do the things, you know, like as, as we, we pray before, you know, the, the activities that I feel that he's calling me into, like it even just recenters me and, and the, the ways that the enemy might be trying to shroud my judgment or confuse me in that moment or stir up my, my uh, peace into anger and anxiety. Like those, those 
things are, are wiped away. And now the, the presence of the Lord is empowering me to do the thing that I was going to do anyways. And yet now I'm doing it with him and the assurance that he's walking with me in this. And, and you're one of those people that um, I always enjoy uh, talking to and, and, and even reflecting on because just, just, when, I, when we were talking about this conversation, the reason why your name came to mind was because we knew we wanted to have an entire episode on prayer and intimacy with God. And both Jariel, the co-host of the Fury and Friends show, and I were like, Carmen Powers. Like, let's talk to Carmen. <laughs> she, because you, could you, I, I still remember this book that you gave me, this little old book that was, was such an impact on me. And um, do I even have... I might have given. Oh no, here it is. I keep it right. So oh, yes. this little book right here, the practice of the presence of God, and I it's just another example of doing the life with God. You're gonna say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, and uh, this is amazing. This is the glorious thing here because you know when, before that, the Lord was speaking to me about fellowship. That's one mm. of the books that it speaks about the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because mm. you can do in, in washing dishes, washing yeah. dishes, you are in fellowship constantly. The mm. Lord's presence in your heart constantly. You are in your kitchen, you are in your bedroom, you are in your bathroom. You, the tabernacle of the Lord is inside of you. So He mm. can hear, I don't have to. Of course, you can just every morning just lay, kneel down, do anything, and just pray and go and worship Him and pray. There's so many ways that the Lord just wants to encounter us. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I do more is praying in a journal. Mm. I journal all my prayers. Why? Because the Holy Spirit read my journal. As mm. I start writing, the Holy Spirit is asking me or bring to mind the verses that I need to. All of a sudden, I start um, writing, I had surgery, my mother had surgery, and many things were happening. The Holy Spirit pointed to pray, to look for all the verses of protection. Mm. And I did it. I look for all and I start praying it. The Holy Spirit wants fellowship because he's going to talk in your fellowship. You are going mm -hmm. to ask, okay, Lord, this is, what does it mean? How did you look this person? What are you thinking about this person? Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit wants to encourage that person to He's thinking about that person. Jesus is not for us only. Jesus is for the for a big community of people mm. who are broken, who are suffering, who are yeah. in addictions, who are in so many hard places. And they are waiting for a whisper, from a whisper of the Lord, that we can give it to them. Mm -hmm. How do we get it? We mm. get it through the Holy Spirit. Mm. Not only just, oh, Lord, give me this word. You can say, give me that word. But it is in tune with your heart. Mm. So what did I say? Return to the Lord wholehearted. Is let's get our hearts in tune with this word of God. In yeah. tune yeah. with what he's doing around. And, you know, he, he will lead us. I am yeah. amazed that praying has led me and has led my daughters to the places that they are. I didn't want at the beginning for my places, for the, my daughters to go in places. I was so selfish. 10, right. 15 years ago, I wanted the best. No, you look to make money and do the best that you can to be to do better. Mm -hmm. But that's what the Lord didn't want. It. Right, the Lord right. wanted the will of God. And that only is through prayer. A pastor one day told me this. I said, look at where they are. And they say, great, you pray over them. You did it. You did it. You put the missionaries wherever they are. Hmm. Hmm. So, and sometimes there are prayers that you want for yourself that your kids are going to do it. Hmm. 
David and Solomon, remember? David, yeah. David couldn't build the, the temple. temple. Yeah, yeah. Solomon did it. So keep praying because your kids are going to do something that you are desiring. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that 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 actually touched me in a real way because uh, one of the things, so I've been trying to um, um, start this, this company that um, does inspirational media. That's Freedom Story Media. That is the, the host of this platform and all the other things. But I, ever since my daughter Layla was like 10 years old, um, she's been, you know, um, right alongside me learning how to do a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, wow. like working with the video cameras and doing video editing. And, um, in the past couple of years, I've noticed that in the edit area of video editing, her skills have surpassed mine. And I, I am so, uh, celebrating that, you know, and I'm, yes. I'm, I'm excited about that. And she wants this area to be the direction that she has for her future. So the reason why I, I was touched when you said that was because when I think about what I'm building with Freedom Story Media, I'm not thinking about it for me. I'm thinking about it as putting something together for her that that she would want to continue to, to operate in and finding a place to continue to, uh, you know, explore the ways that the Lord has gifted her and, um, it, it, it's the avenue. Here's here's what it is. It is the avenue in yes. deeper walk of faith for her. And I yes. know that clearly. And um, I'm just grateful that she continues to want to go along this journey with me. Praise so God. that that really that really blessed me right now. Yes. Yes. She's um, blessed I had a question that I was going to ask you that I've now lost. <laughs> <because> <laughs> Okay. You were talking. Well, wait. No, you were talking about um, fellowship uh, with the Lord, and and um, if you guys haven't been taking notes, big big picture recaps. Uh, Carmen is continuing to to point us back to that that marriage of God's word and prayer, and the fruit of that being the intimacy, that fellowship with Him, and it's not one or the other; it's both in the way that they continue to point to each other. Um, what, what role would you say, um, in your journey, maybe early on, or even now, um, that outside of your fellowship with the Lord, but fellowship with the, the church and the community mm -hmm. of God, what role has community played in your growth and your freedom story? Everything. Mm. Community, groups, heart, soul valuable for the Lord. Mm. The Lord says in his word, get together, come back and get together. Without a community, we don't walk the way that we should walk. Mm. I, have, I, I, I have experienced how the Holy Spirit speaks to every person that is in that meeting or group together, doing life together. I have a group right now that uh, is a prayer group, but we read the word and we pray and we share. I have seen many people just going and at, at rapid speed, mm -hmm. rapid speed. And I see, I see a tremendous thing, just community, do, eating together, walking together, doing things together. That's what the Lord's heart is. We cannot be a believer walking alone. Right, That's not right. possible. That's not possible. We have to be together because the places when we are alone, the enemy comes. We yeah. have three enemies. We have the world, my flesh, mm -hmm. and Satan. Mm -hmm. Those three actors are so active mm -hmm. in all our lives. And let me tell you, we need to know this. And I want you to remember this. We are at war. Mm -hmm. We are at war. So good soldiers from the army of the Lord, we have to be ready. We have to be ready and alert 
the word is, in Peter talks so much about being alert. In, in, in uh, Ephesians 6, talk be strong in the Lord mm -hmm. in armor of God. All of these tells me, you know, we have to be all the time just thinking that the Lord has in mind so many things for us through a group. Mm -hmm. What is the Lord doing through groups? He's strengthening us. He's purifying us. He's releasing words of knowledge. Mm -hmm. He's releasing wisdom. And one of the things that we need all the time, encouragement. Yeah, absolutely. We need encouragement. We need encouragement. I will learn. I see people that they were so down for years and now they are they are overcoming just because of group mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. overcoming depression there's so many miracles now the depression is so really especially in the young generation yeah and we are praying Every we are praying for that we're praying for this generation that, that mm -hmm. the Lord just touched in and, and just remove anything that he needs to remove in man uh, regarding the mental. Yep, yep. For all the things that they are And the Lord is faithful. We just yeah. have to pray. We just Amen. Have to pray. Amen. Community, I know, um, for me, is, has been so vital, uh, especially when um, there were this, the beginning season of me being sent out of a community that I'd been part of for a while. Um, I knew like the, the, before the Lord, I really felt like the Lord was releasing me from that. He made it very clear that uh, he wasn't sending me alone to go do mm -hmm. something alone, um, especially yeah. with my tendencies to just put my head down and get things done, you know? <laughs> um, um, and so one of the things that I've really experienced to, to just kind of continue on with your point mm -hmm. is that um, discipleship in community, I found to be the most effective form of discipleship because there's so, there's so many things that if you're doing simply one-on-one -on -one discipleship or if someone's simply, you know, trying to read a book or something like that, there's, there's things that you, that you grab a hold of in a discipleship yes. experience that are from the Lord. But then the, then unintendedly, sometimes there's things that you grab a hold of that actually aren't, that are actually just that other human that, you know, might be their, their own cultural you know, situation or some of their own personal experiences. And what I mm -hmm. found is when you do discipleship in community, that you get, yes. you begin to see the, the uh, patterns, uh, you get to see the common threads of the different ways that people are following the Lord. And it's like, oh, yes, this, this is the thing that is true about everybody, no matter what their culture is, what their context is, what their experience is. Yes. That, that to me speaks. And it, and it's, and and I, I feel like it gives us more opportunity to even hear from the the spirit of God uh, more clearly, uh, as opposed to I, I find when I'm when I'm trying to uh, just hear from the Lord alone on a regular basis, um, I can hear it wrong. <laughs> not not that I don't trust that the Spirit speaks to me, yes. but it's it's harder to discern. You know, when you're not, you know, engaging with other believers and like even sharing those things that you might be hearing and and receiving confirmation of what God might be saying to you, like even just in our conversation, like I, the, the reason why I was being touched was because the spirit was already talking to me. And then I just got a confirmation of something that he was already saying, you know, so, yes, I know you got plenty more to say. I'm gonna let you continue. No, 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 just. It, it is is so amazing how the Lord works in our conversations with people mm -hmm. um, that he wants to assure us. He wants to give us confidence of what he's doing, what is Amen. next. Amen. And people, people, he, we all hear from the Lord. The Lord says, my sheep, here's my boy, because mm -hmm. it's, it's his sheep. So yep. we are listening to the voice of the Almighty God through the Holy Spirit. So yep. we need to be sure of this, that we're yep. going to hear his voice through this. And sometimes he just speaks to us. 
through dreams. Uh, to me, it speaks so much about uh, to dreams and, mm -hmm. and also some visions. But every one of us, we have different gifts. Yeah. And those gifts, when we get together, they get discovered. They get yeah. discovered. And they're so powerful when they're, yes. where they're when they're paired with one another. Our staff just last month we spent our our time our hour and a half together, just talking about the gifts that we saw in one another and like encouraging one another in in you know validating that that we see and and trying to do the work that we know the enemy is often trying to squash and silence and and get people to discard those gifts and yes. and we know that so we're like no 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 we're we're going to come and we're going to fan that flame you know and and encourage you in in those gifts um and i i walked away from that and we hadn't done that much we'd done it like early on when we first came together but I walked yeah. away from that being like, man, we need to do this on a regular basis, you yes. guys. Because we I I personally just felt like so encouraged in the giftings that I knew. And I and I was yeah. seeing people, you know, just just like lighting up as that yes. was happening. That's the beauty of the community, the beauty of uh recognizing uh the way that the Lord is working in each and every one of us. Um, I know I've I've had you on this call for a while. Um, and I don't and I don't want to um you know, uh, take up your entire night. Uh, there's, there's a uh, one or two other things that I was curious about, but I think, um, if there's anything else that I would, I would really want to know is if you were uh, trying to, to encourage someone who is new to the faith, someone who is new to, um, you know, what it means to follow Jesus, anything beyond what you've already shared. Cause you've already, you've kept it very, you know, the foundation, you know, prayer and intimacy, but is there anything beyond that or deeper than that, that you'd want to share? And then I'll give you space to say whatever the Lord has put on your heart. Cause I know yeah. he's been speaking while we've been talking. He, um, for a new believer, I would say stay steady hmm. and grab the word of God, hmm. grab the word of God because that, sustaining in Psalm 119 it talks about the that the word the Lord is the one who sustains us if we don't have the word of God we cannot be sustained in tough times mm -hmm. we can't when tough times comes the Lord wants to bring peace mm -hmm. and that inner peace is really what he wants you see, yeah. we have a soul that is our mind, you know, our heart, our our will, mm -hmm. our emotions. And he wants to heal all those places. How many things mm -hmm. have happened in, 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 we have been broken for so many um, traumas uh, that we have had. He wants to heal those places. And mm -hmm. he heals it day by day. Day by day, we we want everything like so fast. Lord, right. I was praying to you. I, I, I haven't heard anything. I'm already praying uh, a month, two months, and nothing has happened. Where yeah. are you? I can fought with the Lord the same mm -hmm. way. So I know that our emotions just want to, us to win. But the Lord wants to control our emotions. Mm -hmm. I was very emotional. I am still, I am, I get emotional when, when I speak about the Lord. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, it, but the Lord wants to control our emotions. He's got all emotions. And a lot of people say, oh, no. No, he's a God of emotions. His anger, his yeah. passion, seal for my house. Yeah, he's not he's trying to cancel gonna... your emotions. He right. wants them to be submitted to him so that he can use your emotions. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So to a new belief that is desiring just to know more about God, that is dealing with hard places, trials, I could say be steady and ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you because he wants to strengthen us. Mm -hmm. He desires to strengthen us because he knows that we are 
babies. We're beginning our walk. He wants to hold our hands like we call our toddler. I just have my grandsons and I just I just love just to to touch and know that the Lord is doing the same with every mm. new believer. I love new believers. Mm. I love them because they are in the beginning of a, a big discovery. It's a big discovery to know God. I don't know God yet because the more I know, the more I know that I don't know him. Mm. Because there is so much. Right. So keep it steady. Read the word of God and ask him ask him keep asking you don't hear him because maybe work to be maybe have a quiet time mm -hmm. at work those 15 10 minutes just keep a silence and be with him mm -hmm. meditate one of the things that i love the most is meditation meditation mm -hmm. not just to meditate Meditation is in the Bible. It says in Joshua 1a, it says, meditate mm -hmm. in the law. You see, what is this? So you start meditating. You read something in the Word of God. You, something is highlighted. Grab that verse and start thinking. Mm -hmm. I was in a Zoom meeting the other day, and they asked us to uh, grab a verse, your favorite, my, fa my verse, Right now is uh, Acts 6 4 that it talks about give ourselves on prayer and the ministry of the word. That's mm. my verse, my life verse. Uh, mm. Because the door, the door opened the door of praying and also ministering the word of God. And, and you know, the Lord wants us to be thinking. I was thinking that the verse in the Zoom meeting. And immediately, as soon as, as, as I read, give ourselves, that was highlighted. Mm -hmm. Immediately came, okay, Carmen, give yourself as a living sacrifice. Mm. Give your whole heart consistently. Give yourself, give all your life, all everything for that. Hmm. That what was happening as I was meditating, it gives our soul. That was a new discovery that the Lord has given to me that day. Hmm. Can you imagine wow. all the new things that the Lord wants to give you to each one yeah. of us? Yeah. And how and how how many of us um are are missing? Uh, the opportunities that that he lays before us to to be receiving more and more from him because we're too busy chasing down other things or or even trying to chase after things that we think he wants to give us but and they are good you know, what's that right and they are uh, we we think that those things are good Right, right, yeah, exactly. Because, because usually, usually, like early on in 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 life, for me, my problems were like, okay, I need to get, fight between sin and like the evil things that I would pursue, and like the things that God is, you know, of the of God, you know, the church and things like that. But that's though I'm still a, a sinner, my my decisions are no longer a sinful thing versus a, a godly thing. It's like. Looks like all good choices, but what is the thing that God's calling us to? And like that, even even just that mindset for me is still something that I believe is a is a broken mindset for me because I spend so much time focusing on what God wants me to do, and and He keeps calling me back to like, but but you're missing it. <laughs> like, I just I just want you to be with me. And like, trust me, I'll I'll give you things to do. But stop coming to me for things to do. Just come to me for me. <laughs> you know, like, that's it. That, 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 like, that's that's the, what the Lord, I swear, keeps saying to me. You know. And when you meditate, you'll be amazed that maybe you're going to encounter what you're meditating in front of you. Mm. It becomes mm. a reality, and He will let you know 
that he was reading your mind. That's something that blows my mind. He's reading your mind. He's reading your mind. Whatever you are, he's reading it. He he read my my desires, my my mind. Oh Lord. When you start meditating, I believe it. you start meditating, you know exactly. Oh, I better don't. Oh Lord, forgive me for that thought. Mm. You said we can't. The Lord, what He does is just as I for the gospel is a gospel of repentance. The more mm. we repent, the constantly that we repent, our fellowship, our our relationship gets stronger. Yeah, yeah. Because we know yeah. that we fail. Mm. We fail. I am, I, 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 I am a human. I fail. Mm -hmm. But I repent. Yeah. And I is clean sheet. Yep. New thing. He loves. It, it's this this the Lord forgets all the sins. He yeah. wants us pure. He wants us continuously going to him, knowing Father, I'm sorry. I blew it, I blew it, and I blew it. Forgive me. And mm -hmm. another thing about repentance, mm -hmm. in uh, Luke 1, I read, uh, Luke 1 or 2, I, it says, uh, John the Baptist says, show the fruit of your repentance. Mm -hmm. And that got stuck with me. I had mm -hmm. to show the Lord. I had to show people that when I repent, when I forgive a person, that's another issue about uh, when you pray in your heart, it start turning inward and look at your heart. And the Lord is going to show you you are not forgiving somebody. She mm -hmm. showed it to me. And forgiveness, forgiveness is an issue for freedom. Mm. Attention to this. Forgiveness brings freedom. Yeah. We we have to forgive with this spirit of forgiveness which is the holy spirit i can say i forgive and it's a good thing i make a decision to forgive yeah. that the lord the holy spirit is the one who help us to really yeah. forgive yeah and, you know and i found i found with some of the people that i've had the longest standing issues with in my life that um the the first step of making the decision to forgive is hard. The the um, seeking the Lord in prayer and, and getting him to empower that forgiveness takes persistence. But then even recognizing that for me, I find that I have to continue that. Like, um, and I'm specifically talking about like relationships like that with my father, where there was such longstanding, you know, repeated issues. When, when there's a, a thing that reminds me of those things, I have to then kind of take it back to the beginning and remember you're forgiving him and like yes. seek the Lord's help again, you know, and, and continue that process. I And I, and I don't know if this is just me and I don't know, but I, I used to always think that, you know, that for everybody, it just worked where you would, you would make that decision and you'd pray about it. And then you're golden and you never have to, deal with that again and maybe that's true for some <laughs> uh and maybe 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 there's still work that the lord is doing to bring yes. me to a certain place of that you know um but i just find that like i just have to keep, i have to keep doing that work with the lord of like, yes okay i'm 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 choosing and, to forgive I'm choosing to forgive and we don't diminish of course what we what the person has suffered okay mm -hmm. for what they have done to us we don't diminish that, and the Lord knows that. Yeah. What we want is, is just to come to the Lord because He know He knows our pain. He knows how to heal. That's the thing. He, he we got salvation. We got the whole package. Mm. Salvation, healing, not only physical healing, emotional, which is sometimes more traumatic that damage right. our physical bodies, and deliverance. Deliverance is something so important. We carry for our past so many things, evil things that sometimes have influenced us. Mm -hmm. This and the prayer are going to get rid of it. Amen. Day by day, day by day. We have to believe it. 
we have to believe it because God is so amazing, loving, and powerful. He wants us to be delivered, to be healed, to be safe. Yeah. And and to me, what a what a father that we have. What a father that we have. And I, mm-hmm. and I just thank God for who he is, for what he's bringing to us, and just continue this, just calling us to come to him in prayer, come to him in worship. Worship mm-hmm. music is so amazing and it works in us as can encounter the Lord in a precious way. Mm-hmm. It, it, there is so much that the Lord has to do, especially in this season. Mm. Is we have to walk together with Him. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much for all this, sister. I know uh, I'm, I'm uh, as we're walking through this closing of this conversation. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to some time this evening to really actually go back and meditate on some of the things that I know that the Lord has been speaking to me. And um, um, I don't know how to, how to put it, but to, to make some, some renewed commitments for the way that, um, that I engage with the Lord. I think that's, that's the way I would, I would put it where I, because I'm such a doer, um, I unintentionally turn my relationship with God into simply something about producing fruit of production of things of of bringing something out of nothing versus the fruit of intimacy and closeness with him and just a the joy of and like i know that 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 is something that i i always need and that's one of the reasons why i love going on walks cuz when i go on walks in the nature like I just feel like I have that, but here's what what almost and undoubtedly always happens, and then I'm I'm gonna get you to to kind of close this out in prayer. But what undoubtedly always happens to me is when I start actively praying, I find that I can be in an intimate prayer moment for a short period of time before I am now trying to have the Lord do something <laughs> and <laughs> ask. Asking him to help me do something or show me the the way that I should do something, and I yeah. struggle just sitting in that place of intimacy with him. You know what I mean? And yes. so many things just pull me out of that. So I would I would ask as you close us in prayer, if you could pray for just our the all those that are listening and watching, our ability to be closer with him to to even like. Um, um, uh, prioritize the the ways and means okay. that we can draw closer to him and wh- whatever else in regards to uh, prayer and intimacy and what you believe the Lord has put on your heart in regards to this conversation. Would you just pray that and, and so much more yes. over everybody, including me? <laughs> Before I pray, um, yeah. the Lord remind me this to a new believer, to all who are listening, going to listen, um, prioritize your time. Mm-hmm. Set up your time. If it's in the morning, it would be wonderful. You can get up an hour before, or maybe two hours. For me, I, I have I have to have at least hour and a half or more. That's so important. More than God, important for God is for you. Right. Then the Lord is waiting for you. That's the thing that he's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to just go there, but prioritize what is important in your life. And for the life of your family, start doing it at your home and you will see something that I have seen in my house. Hmm. The Holy Spirit is going to be roaming every room I have seen my daughters come into my house after finished college, college, and they have re, have cried and repent and doing things that I, I have seen so many things. Mm-hmm. The spirit of the Lord, the Lord wants to leave His presence in our house. Another thing I still do, I read. Books about prayer, 
My last mm. book that I should have uh, got a long time ago is uh, by Richard Foster, um, uh, Heart, uh, Home for the Heart. It's about, but I am, I'm reading books about prayer because it encouraged me to keep going. And if you want to pray, I would encourage you to read the Bible and little by little, a page to pages of the book of prayer. And the good thing is, is uh, it shows you testimonies about mm. what the Lord does for prayer. I have a lot of testimonies, but it would be for another time. Uh, yeah. But but the Lord is going to do something. And now, uh, if you would allow me, I I I'm going to pray. Please do. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. We just thank you for your presence. We just thank you that you are alive. You are alive in us. Father, I speak to all of us, Lord, that, that you will strengthen us. You will, you will help us to pray. Holy Spirit, help us to pray. Teach us how to pray. It's the urgency of the hour is hmm. chapter 8 and Revelation talks about the prayers are in a bowl. One day I dreamed, Lord, that I, why? I was meditating, Lord, in your, why they are in a bowl. Precious. And, and Lord, thank you that you gave me the vision that I was in a scuba diving in the deeps of the ocean and you show me that I that prayer is like breath hmm. father I pray that prayer will be a breathing a breathing place for all of us Lord for the hmm. will of the kingdom of God that wants to be released hmm. father in all of us I pray for a heart that returns to you totally. For every person that is broken, that is suffering, that is that is is just crying right now. I pray, Father, that you will strengthen them, mm. that you will comfort them, that you show that love that is so deep, so high, so amazing, so indescribable. Mm. Father, I pray that that all of us will read the, your precious letter, your precious book, Lord, that is, is alive and wants to speak to us for the things that are going to happen, for the things that are going on. Father, I pray for this young generation. As an older woman, I, I call up all the older people, Father, to pray for mm. those who need prayer for those young people who are suffering who have mental depression who have are attacked by media for the world and everything father i pray father that you will open their hearts i pray for older people and i pray for young people that you will open their hearts to receive you right now yeah. i pray for salvation of millions of people i pray father that you will come, your mighty spirit will be released with fire and baptizes all of us. I pray, Father, that the will of God will be in our mind and all the ministry leaders hmm. in the region. Yeah. Father, because this is all about you. Hmm. Father, I pray that every preacher, pastor, all of ministers, that they, they'll make the audiences of one that you are the one who's looking at them you are the one who's seeing their hearts i pray mm -hmm. father for households to be totally surrendered for you i pray that there will be gatherings of people just worshiping you and getting together in their houses that's what i desire god and i desire prayer because you said it my house it will be a house of prayer and it's mm -hmm. coming father it's coming because it's like the air that we breathe we need breath the bread mm -hmm. of your rule the bread of you holy spirit we need in our lungs father we need mm -hmm. to in order to leave the kingdom living that you want us to to do 
Father, and I pray a blessing, Father, for all the people who are watching or will watch, Father, that you will release your blessings of ministries, Father. The ministries, even if one is your ministry, that's a precious to Jesus. Even if it's one dishing, washing dishes, and just talking to God and praying that the Lord enjoys and the Lord is pleased with it. Father, so thank you for humbling us. Thank you that you are humbling us more and more, Father. We need that because mm -hmm. we know that you are powerful. You are awesome. You are awesome. You're worthy to be praised. Yeah, You're everything. You're worthy to be praised. It's all about your son, Jesus. It's yes. all about him. It's he who determines our lives, our destinies, the life of my family. And I pray for our descendants to be trusting in him, to be mm. holding on to the word of the Lord. And I pray mm. that the kingdom is coming and it coming with force mm. because the law is coming. In the name of Jesus, and I plead the blood of Jesus for everyone that is watching and for you, our man. That your ministry will be enlarged because of the mighty Holy Spirit, because He desires that. Yes. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesus' name. Hmm. Wow. Well, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Mama Powers, Mama Carmen. <laughs> thank you. As we, as we, we all that know and love you call you. Um, you've been a, a spiritual mother to so many, and um, your your presence, um, not that your presence is so significant, but that your the presence the the Lord, the Lord's presence is always so rich in every encounter I've had with you, and it's a beautiful thing. And um, I I I I don't know what else to say. <laughs> um, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on here. And, and to all you guys that are watching and listening, I, I hope that even if there's just a nugget of, of what the Lord is saying through this conversation, that that would be uh, something that you would take and, and meditate on with him. And uh, that that would continue to um, go and grow as a, as a seed for, for whatever it is that he wants to plant in your life today. Amen. And if this is your uh, first time listening, or maybe you've been listening or watching for a while and you haven't subscribed, I'd encourage you to go ahead and subscribe. So you don't miss the next interview. Um, we've got actually in the next interview, an amazing um, hip hop ministry leader um, out in Buffalo, New York. Um, and I'm not going to tell you too much more because I want to have you guys come back and enjoy that then. But uh, let's let's uh, say thank you once again to Carmen Powers. And uh, we'll see you guys back here on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, am, I, I was so blessed. And I'm so blessed. So blessed. And anytime I am here. Yes, this was, okay. this was awesome.